So we're back on the outdoor temperature sensor using the ESP12, the ESP8266 module. Um, it's still on the breadboard, but we've switched out uh, the LM35. Uh, well, it's actually a TW36GZ, but it, it's uh, pin compatible with the LM35, which was an analog temperature sensor. So it would kick out a voltage, which I'd feed into the ADC. So I switched that out for a DS18B20 uh, temperature sensor, which is uh, one wire temperature sensor made by Dallas Electronics, is it? Uh, it's, well, it's a Dallas sensor, so we're, we're using that instead. And the reason I'm doing that, uh, firstly, the, the LM35 I couldn't find in a waterproof package, or the TW36GZ, uh, but also it was suffering from a bit of internal heating, or at least the enclosure was maintaining a certain level of heat outside. And this one has a uh, waterproof packaging, and I was gonna drill a hole in the side and then use a, a hot glue gun to seal it from the weather. But someone said that was a bad idea and I agreed. Uh, and then they suggested, someone suggested I use the bathroom sealant. Uh, I could get a Colt gun out and seal around it that way. And that sounded like a really good idea until I thought about it a bit more and uh, I wasn't really sure if it would be a good idea, but someone made a really good suggestion that I pick up some of these cable glands and they're a waterproof mechanism for taking your cable through your case. So you essentially put it like that, drill a hole through, and then on the end, it's kind of difficult to see, but as you tighten the, uh, the screw, it gets smaller and smaller on the inside. It's hard, these ones are the wrong size. I bought two sizes because I wasn't sure which one the cable would go through. Now this one slots easily through here and I've tightened that up a fair way. So these were the wrong size, so that was a waste of money and time. Uh, but I picked up some smaller ones, so we're gonna be using that. And this one barely goes through, I have to really force it and then when I tighten it, it's gonna be uh, really tight, hopefully waterproof. Well, not weatherproof at least. So what we're gonna do now is drill a hole in the case. Now, I'm not used to drilling through plastics, so it'll be an interesting experience. Uh, I've got a selection of drill bits, and I'm not quite sure which ones you need to use for this kind of material, but we're just gonna go for the largest one I've got, because uh, if we look at this, that's the diameter hole that I need to drill. And the largest drill bit I have isn't really big enough. So I'm gonna to have to file away, uh, drill through and then file away at the hole until I get to the right size. So let's do that now. I did forget to say that the ADC on the ESP-12 is going to be used to measure the battery voltage, um, which is another benefit of using this DS18B20. Now I can't feed in what could be six volts uh, into the ESP-12 because um, it can only read a maximum of one volt on that uh, ADC. So I've got a voltage divider here, which is a, I think it's a 100K resistor and a 20K resistor, which should take six volts down to one volt. Now these won't be floating at six volts. They'll be something like 5.5, something like that, which means my analog reading will be below one volt, which is good. So let's start drilling. That's a bit difficult to get through. I think it might just be melting the plastic. <laughs> I seriously am putting quite a lot of pressure on this. Oh, <laughs> oh my word. Did you see that? <laughs> Maybe I should have put that in a vise or something. Uh, you can see it pretty much did just melt the plastic onto the, uh, the end of the drill here. So that's why it was so difficult. But there's our hole, which should be fine. Uh, this, uh, this definitely isn't gonna fit in, and nowhere near. So I'll file that out. It's 
got a long way to go. Maybe I should try and drill sideways. That's close, we're almost there. thought this would be a little bit easier than this. <laughs> All right, are we? Almost. See, the thing is, if I had the right tools for this job, it would have made it an awful lot easier. The right tools, there we go. Perfect. Well, I say perfect, it's not perfect. That's not the way it's meant to go in exactly either. Done, okay. Now to tidy up a little bit. Right, now we've got this securely connected. I did manage to cut myself uh, while doing that. Well done, me. Uh, so we're just gonna bung everything in. It's a pretty simple process now. So I'll put this in here. I'll try and coil this. I don't really wanna shorten the cable because this isn't gonna be the final thing. So I might have to come back to it. So we'll just try and sort of wrap it around a little bit. Uh, oh gosh, how's this gonna work? Like this, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll push that through. Ah, oh, mayday. Got a little bit of a problem here. I've pushed out the rubber seal in this cable gland, which is very frustrating. That cut is uh, it's a bit distracting, isn't it? So let's just try and pop that back in. There we go. And if I hold on to it as I push this cable through, There we go, that's better. Oh, the battery's gonna fit in. Yeah, they'll fit in just fine. I'm using the, the voltage regulator that's on the, the module there, so uh, it's not ideal, but I will try and switch it out if I can. I don't think it's gonna be pin compatible with one that someone mentioned recently, which is an HT 333, something like that. So the next section, the next part really, is just to screw this cap on. And that cap constricts this bit here uh, and makes it more waterproof, or water resistant, <laughs> I should say. So it won't screw on all the way because it's not, uh, well, will it? I'm not sure, maybe it will. It looks like it's going to, but it should be constricting that uh, that end, I think that's about as far as it's gonna go. That's very solid. So there we go, happy with that. So the next thing is just to put these batteries in. I've freshly charged these, so they should last a good long while. And I need to put ground to ground. And then power is gonna go to the raw input, which is where Ah, over there, where this red wire is. Is the battery box on? <laughs> it is off, good. That's what I want it to be. So there's the raw input wire. Let's pop it underneath there, actually. Secure enough. It's not actually gonna get knocked around at all. It's gonna be relatively untouched. Make sure everything's gonna be okay with the box clearance, yeah? Okay. And then I'll turn the battery box on and pop the lid on and then pop it outside. Ordinarily, I would just use a screwdriver, but I'm feeling lazy today, so we're going to cheat. There we are. Now it should be on, <laughs> hopefully. We'll find out shortly. Let's pop it outside. So this is where it's going, right next to my back door uh, and the bamboo plant. Just gonna pop it down here. It's gonna be relatively sheltered, hopefully. So I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted on the results. 
and uh, I once once I know it's all going to work and it lasts a fair while, I'll uh, do a proper video on the code and, and stuff like that. All right, I'll see you guys next time.